sounds like. Keep trying. La, 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 la. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, there it is. And it won't get too close. I'm uh, using this mic this morning because I have heard that you can hear me a little bit better, that the, my uh, voice is a little clearer on this microphone. So first of all, I'll start by uh, how wonderful it is to be back in St. Catharines with my family and with my church family as well. And just a quick update that my mom, Mona McGill, is uh, recovering. Uh, she is no stranger to strokes, um, but this time it affected the, the back of her brain, so it's the first time that she's had her mobility affected. So it's gonna be a long road uh, to get that left side of her body uh, doing what her brain is uh, telling it to do. So thank you so much uh, for your emails, your concern, and just for the ability to be home uh, where my heart and feet told me that I needed to be last week. I'm, I will be forever grateful for that. As we enter into our Remembrance Day service this morning. Um, let's take a moment to reflect on these words. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. And part of that today is us living out our mission here at Trillium United Church as we read this together. To know the love of God and to share it through worship, service, fellowship, learning, and hospitality. And our vision, we are called to be a community that lives God's love in the world as a diverse spiritual family, open and welcoming to all. Today, to worship on the land that is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. For thousands of years, they have lived on this land, honoring the Creator and living with respect in creation. We acknowledge their stewardship of the land and their relationship with the land, its plants and animals, and the lakes and streams with their life forms throughout the ages.
Good morning and welcome to Trillium United Church. My name is Barb McGill and I'm grateful to be in team ministry with Reverend Valerie Pitt, Daryl Joseph Denis, Ashley Turner, and the good people of Trillium United Church. Let's now prepare ourselves to, for worship. Take a deep breath. Let go of worries, the busyness, and prepare ourselves to be together here fully in the presence of God. And this morning we light this candle to remind us of the presence of Christ. May the light of love surround us. As the candle is lit, please stand for the singing of the national anthem. Beyond words, beyond battle, beyond the outcry, lies silence. For what words and what warring and what anger has words enough? It is sacred, this silence, and holy, this remembering. For silent remembering can carry enough pain and truth together to whisper again, it is enough. We remember with honor and respect all victims of war. We remember those who have died. We remember as we work for peace. Amen. We remember the bereaved, husbands and wives, sons and daughters, friends and relatives, lovers and dependents. We remember We remember families all over the world who are affected by war, families who are separated from loved ones, families who are too afraid to go to sleep at night, families who live in fear. We remember as we were 
We remember children who have never known peace in their lives, those who long to live fully and without fear. We remember with sorrow loss of potential, of talents, of hopes, and of dreams. We remember as we were We remember, we grieve, and we pray for the grace to honor those who died in war by living each and every day for peace. Please join me as we sing our opening hymn in Voices United, number 84, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. join me in our opening prayer. First of all, peace be with you. And also with you. Please join me in our opening prayer as we say together, Loving, Loving God, God at this annual time, time of remembrance, remembrance our, our thoughts turn to the fear and pain of war. Come, come gently into our, our worship this morning, morning that, that we may know, know your, your peace. peace. Not the peace of violence ignored and fear repressed, but the real peace of injustice exposed and reconciliation achieved. Amen. And now we offer to you the prayer that your son Jesus taught to us, our Father, who art in heaven. And now we come to a time and a place in our worship service as has become a tradition here. As the choir is singing Flanders Fields today, then our honor roll will be offered on the PowerPoint. And we take ourselves to a place of prayer where we give thanks and gratitude for each one named and each one known to each person gathered. And to people everywhere who've experienced war in Flanders Field.
And now we'll take a moment to remember those who are named and those who are not named. Please stand. And join me in these words of remembrance. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. They shall not weary them nor the years to them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, May the grace and peace abound and bless each one of us. Please be seated. I'm now going to invite Chelsea Gite up to read our scripture this morning. Please pray with me. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the responsive psalm. Blue skies again this morning, God. And you made it all. You are never out of my thoughts. 
I'm conscious of you every walking moment. If only I could show others your presence as clearly as I see it myself, then they could share this wonderful bubbling of joy inside. You love everything that you have made, and you made everything. And now a reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 20, verse 27 to 38. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless, then the second, and the third married her. And so in the same way, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. And the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will be the woman be? For the seven have married her. Jesus said to them, those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed, and the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all of them are alive. Herein lies wisdom. In 1971, four years before the end of the Vietnam War, Scottish-born Australian singer-songwriter Eric Bogle wrote the song, and the band played Waltzing Matilda. He wrote it as an oblique or cloaked reference to the Vietnam War. And even though Australian boys were dying in the Vietnam War, few on the home front could place Vietnam. So he set the song in the Battle of Gallipoli from World War I. Gallipoli is and was etched on the ethos of the Australian people, and everybody knew the story, even the youngest school kids. And in this song, Bogle pulls no punches. The line that hits my heart every time is, I never knew there were worse things than dying. And then this verse, and so now every April I sit on me porch and I watch the parades pass before me. I see my old comrades, how proudly they march, reviving old dreams of past glories. And the old men march slowly, old bones stiff and sore. They're tired old heroes from a forgotten war. And the young people ask, what are they marching for? And I ask myself the same question. And every year that I've had the honor to speak on this Sunday, I too start with that same question. I think like Bogle, each one of us understands that we do not do this to glorify war. And as I've mentioned, I spent the last almost 10 days in Victoria and one morning, I spent a very rainy morning in the archives of the township of Esquimalt, BC, home to Canada's Pacific Naval Base and on the land of the Lequigan and Songhees peoples. 
I sat down at a large wooden table, and in front of me the files that the archivist had pulled the night before were in front of me. And I opened the folder. The first article was shaped around the question, Grandma, what was the war like? Well, it was small towns with an overwhelming population of mostly women and children. Echoes of the song, Where Have All the Young Men Gone? Of children living with grandparents or neighbors as families struggled to make ends meet as fathers, brothers, and uncles went off to war and mothers went to work. And daughters went to work too. There were food rations, community vegetable gardens that supplied vegetables, chickens, and eggs so that people on the home front did not have to rely on imported food. One of my favorite stories that I read um, was about the shortage of elastic. And the shortage of elastic had an uh, impact on underwear. And so people would put buttons, sew buttons on their uh, underwear that would often malfunction at inopportune times, like the bus stop when you're wearing a skirt. But these are stories that reflect the humor and the generosity of people living in difficult times, of living in new ways so that all would have enough. And I know that many of you have your own stories to share. It seems sometimes that living in crisis brings out the best in humanity. The next article that I found was from 2004 from Normandy, and it was commemorating six years since the Battle of Normandy. The journalist writes, this day marked for the first time a German leader Gerhard Schroeder had attended a D-Day celebration. Jacques Chirac, former French president, noted that Schroeder's presence was truth, proof that nations and peoples who yesterday divided by the clash of arms standed united in silence, in remembrance, and in reflection. He said, hatred has no future here. On this anniversary, the world is watching. But further down the pile, I found the words of Reverend Yablonsky, and these are the ones that stuck with me. It is important to remember not to glorify war, but to impart to the young, and all insert to impart on all of us, the blessing of peace. And yet today, we live in a world where two billion people live lives that are shaped by conflict and insecurity. Where one in every four young people are affected by armed conflict. And retired General Romeo Dallaire, through the initiative Principles of Peace, shares that there are currently 52 ongoing conflicts worldwide that 90% of conflicts in the 2000s were initiated by countries that have already experienced civil war. It takes an average of seven years for conflict to reoccur, and that 35% of peace agreements go unimplemented. And we here today, as followers of the great peacemaker and bridge builder, followers of the Prince of Peace, we might ask, what is this blessing of peace that Reverend Yoblonsky spoke of? And I thought a good working definition to start with might be Nobel Peace Prize winner Nelson Mandela's definition. That peace is not just the absence of conflict. Peace is the creation of an environment where all can flourish regardless of race, color, creed, religion, gender, class, caste, or any other social markers of difference. I might add to that list disability. It's interesting to note that the Hebrew word for peace, shalom, means fullness and having everything you need to be holy and fully yourself. 
We heard Tarek Haddad, Syrian refugee and developer of a family business, Peace by Chocolate, say last week, or a few weeks ago, that without, without peace there is no life. Without peace you cannot go to work. You cannot go to school, build businesses, raise kids. You can't do anything without peace. The United Church's work with the Canadian food gang, bank, grain banks reminds us that conflict causes food shortages and severe disruption of economic activities, threatening the means of survival of entire populations. Religion, ethnicity, language, social and cultural practices are elements which should enrich human civilization. The adding to the wealth of our diversity why should they be allowed to become a cause for division and violence? We demean our common humanity by allowing that to happen. And I believe that it's Frederick Bruckner that offers us these words. It's tempting to blame the secular world for the eclipse of religion in modern society. It would be more honest to blame religion for its own defeats. Religion declined not because it was refuted, but because it became irrelevant, dull, oppressive, insipid. When faith is completely replaced by creed, worship, of dis uh, worship by discipline, love by habit, when faith becomes an heirloom rather than by a living fountain, when religion speaks only in the name of authority rather than with the voice of compassion, its message becomes meaningless. And this is very much Jesus' message to the Sadducees today. As followers of Jesus and as witnesses to the living Christ, we aim to follow in the way of Jesus, peacemaker and bridge builder, to bear witness to the living Christ. The gospel passage today opens with intrigue as the Sadducees are asking Jesus about the resurrection. And I don't know about you, but I, I was sitting on the edge of my seat that I might get an answer of what res resurrection is explained by Jesus himself. But disappointingly and predictably, Jesus does not answer the question. The Sadducees want to trip Jesus up with what we today might call a doctrinal argument to try to explain intellectually, maybe through systemic theology, about the greatest mystery of our faith, the resurrection. But Jesus does not bite. He answers by saying, I can tell you what it looks like. That resurrection is simply not simply more of the life that we enjoy here. Resurrection life isn't more, it's different. And it won't be marked by the same things which mark this life. Resurrection, being fully present in the presence of God, is not a past state to which we expect or feel entitled to return to. It's instead an aspiration, a way of being where we invite God to lead us. The poet T.S. Eliot in his famous poem, The Wasteland, calls April the cruelest month of the year. I know it's April, <laughs> but because the showers of, I mean, I know it's November, because the, <laughs> because the showers of April stir up the dull and dormant roots of trees, and flowers to begin bursting forth with new life instead of allowing them to remain comfortably asleep in the frozen ground of winter. Yet the sleep of the tree roots and the flower bulbs is the sleep of hibernation, not of rest. Trees are meant to put out green leaves. Tulips were meant to push up through the soil and produce beautiful blossoms not to hibernate in the frozen sleep of habit or tradition or familiarity. The resurrection is not just some extension of our world today. It's a whole new world. The world as God intended the world to be. 
Through resurrection life, Jesus says that the most ostracized and marginalized would be considered like angels and children of God, being children of the resurrection. And this is the radical statement of the gospel, which echo Mandela's words. Peace is not just the absence of conflict. It is the creation of an environment where all can flourish. So indeed, what are they marching for? And we ask ourselves the same question. What is this blessing of peace that we remember today? And here's a thought. Buchner says, generally speaking, if you want to know who you really are, if you want to live a life of resurrection, knowing as distinct from who you like to think you are, a life as distinct from who we like to think we are, we are to keep an eye on where our feet, where our movement takes us. So here's a few thoughts for the next, the coming time. So maybe your movement might take you over to the Mennonite Church of Canada's peace conference that's taking place at Bethany United Church as a chance to see, to hear, and experience firsthand how people are rising into resurrection life and are changing lives and communities through peace building. To hear about people bearing witness to the resurrection from people living below the poverty line, from people creating quilts to lift up the story of indigenous peoples and the residential schools. To hear about how Ukrainian people are preserving humanity, supporting people impacted by trauma and finding new ways to live in peace or about embracing beloved community and helping your faith community practice peace as a part of our daily lives and as expressions of our faith. Or maybe about raw carrot soup, which creates meaningful employment for talented individuals with disabilities. No charge, no expertise, just an open heart and the willingness to step deeper into the mystery of resurrection life. Maybe you'll move over to your computer and start reading about the United Church's commitment to peace in Palestine. But I know that you will definitely want to move down to Ruby Carroll Hall after church on November 27th for a bowl of soup to support the peace-building ministries of the Canadian Food Grains Bank, an organization that is committed to creating peace through food sustainability. So we come here week after week to worship our God, to worship the risen Christ. We are people of the resurrection, and it is a whole new world, the world that God intended us to, intended the world to be when we live the resurrection life. And so for this blessing of peace, in the words of the Apostle Paul, let us pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbuilding. Today we come to remember, to grieve, and we pray for the grace to honor those who died in a way, in war, by living each day in peace. Because for our tomorrow, they gave their today. Shalom.
We come to the time and the place in our worship service where we lift up the life and the work of the church community. I wanted to begin by saying how good it is to have Bob back today with us here, a church family. Thank God. And also to recognize that difficult transition for Bob, leaving family a long way away in BC and arriving here, jet lagged, no doubt. Um, and so we hope that she's able to take some time to transition into this time and place. I know that she's been missed. Lots of you have been praying for Bob and her mom and dad and everyone, and we'll continue to do that. A couple of announcements. Uh, next Sunday, we've been thinking a little bit about where we are on this journey of transition on the road. And we thought we'd have a gathering after church. You can stay and have a muffin and a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, meet some new friends, we hope. And for a short conversation where your shoes might be pinching a little bit or you've hit a few bumps on the highway, whatever that might look like. So it'll be a safe place uh, to have that conversation facilitated by Joan. Have I got the date right? Next Sunday. Yes, the 13th. And so please stay and, uh, and let's build some community together. Today, um, I'd like to announce, are there any birthdays for a start off? Elspeth. Oh, Elspeth, I heard from the back. Who, and Elspeth, is it your birthday? Oh, not you. Maggie. Tomorrow. And Kathy Kelsey, tomorrow as well. You could have a party, the two of you, together. And can you call out the name, Sandra? Birdie Anderson. Birdie Anderson. Gertie Anderson. Gertie. Is yours tomorrow? Today. Today. Is it? Oh, happy birthday, everybody. Oh, why is this happening? 90th. Ber happy birthday, Gertie. Can we sing? Congratulations, happy birthday and birthday blessings, every, everyone. Um, next Thursday, building on the birthday theme is a games day here at the church. Please feel welcome to come, bring your own lunch and have some desserts. And also I'd like to ask David to come and talk. Today's Vista day. Just of note, when I buy Vista cards, I just buy them for my groceries. It's not like I'm buying gift cards or anything. And it's just a really good way to support the program and uh, buy food. Come on up. Morning, everyone. Morning. Normally I talk about Vista, but today there's another special touch that it, uh, that it has to offer. Um, if you might read the e-news this week, there's a little story about our uh, out of the coal program and what they try to do to make things a little bit more joyous at Christmas for the people they serve. And Vista becomes part of that in that we sell uh, certain cards that they add to the gifts that they give to their, their uh, people uh, at Christmas time, Christmas Eve, Christmas morning. So on your Vista order forms, you have $10 gift cards available for Tim Hortons. The line for Giant Tiger General Store is uh, blacked out, but don't let that stop you because you can, there's plenty of t uh, room there to, to write it in. So far on this order, and I've only uh, processed about half of them, we have over 50 uh, Tim Horton cards been ordered. Uh, if you want to participate, we have another order coming up early in December, and you can add either one of these to your order. So I just want to inform you of this and how worthwhile it is. Thank you. Thank you, David. So another opportunity to support Out of the Cold with uh, Tim Hortons and Giant Tiger gift cards. With all of those announcements, um, we take a moment now with gratitude to bring, having been blessed by God, to bring our offerings to God. Our offerings will now be received.
loving God, uh, we bring the work of our hands and the love of our hearts to you. We ask that you bless these gifts, that they become true offerings and perform a miracle, helping people in the world who have little to eat, bringing about justice and supporting the work of the Prince of Peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Let's pray together. Loving God, make me a channel of your peace. Let the light that is within me and around me shine within each one. For in all seasons, in times of poverty and prosperity, in times of sorrow and joy, in times of war and peace, you are present with your people. We gather again at this time of remembrance. We recall those who gave their lives in war so that others might live in freedom and peace. We remember those whose bodies, minds and souls are scarred by war and whose lives will forever bear the wounds of trauma, violence, and loss. We remember all who continue to serve to bring about peace in the world. We remember families who've been caught up in the world's power struggles. We bring to mind this morning war and conflict in lives that continue all over the world, in Palestine, Ukraine, Yemen, Myanmar, and Syria, to name a few. And we remember those who've lost their homes and their livelihoods, those who now seek refuge in other countries, and children who have no sense of security or hope for the future. We remember all whose lives were taken so that we would have freedom to live. And we recognize as well how fragile peace can be. We follow the one who is named the Prince of Peace, who knew that there would be no peace without uncovering injustice. We follow the one who rocked the boat, who turned the tables, and consistently stood with the poor and the marginalized. And so today, we pray for people who worry about not having enough food to put onto the table. We offer our prayers for all who are seeking a living wage and for government to have integrity and fairness in all of their dealings with workers. We remember those who make and keep peace here and around the world and offer your thanks for those who work to shape just laws and look for the common good. We remember God's grace and care in time of need and we pray for all of those who are hurting. Especially today we remember Helen Schlenke Sch and families as they grieve the death of Roland. We pray for Barb's mum and for Evelyn in the hospital. Let there be peace, Lord, and let it begin with us, with each of us, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now we come to our closing hymn as we sing together today from Voices United 678 for the healing of the nations.
Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. And deep peace of the infinite peace to you. And now let's sing together, Go Now in Peace. <laughs> 